Hello, Furcos, and welcome to this episode 72 of the Chris Hunter Comedy Podcast with me, Chris Hunter. Hello, are you well? Have you had a good week? That's nice to know. I'm glad you told me. Thank you. I can hear you perfectly clearly through the radio. Now, you guys are lucky I'm even doing a podcast tonight because, folks, it is September the 10th, 2019, which can mean only one thing, of course. That means that the almighty Bill Burr's new comedy special is out today on Netflix, and I've not yet watched it. It's called Paper Tiger, and it's going to be fucking amazing. It's filmed at the Royal Albert Hall in London, I've been there to watch a Final Fantasy concert, which in itself is an amazing experience. If you ever get a chance to go to a video game music concert, do it. It's amazing. They have massive orchestras. The music is very emotional. It's driven. It's very, very reminiscent and nostalgic. And they have the stuff up on the screens that kind of show you the video game footage and all this kind of shit. You know, the stuff that you really like. Anywho, Bill recorded the special at the Albert Hall and... He had opening for him Adam Rowe of Liverpool Hot Water Comedy Club fame. And it looked spectacular. So you guys, like I said, very lucky. I should have watched it before doing the podcast. But I got home. I made tea. I thought I'll go do the podcast first. You guys come first. And then I can relax and know that I'm not due to do something soon. Because I'll just be sat there watching all Freckle Nuts himself. And just enjoying my evening. Because that's what evenings are for, aren't they? Tuesday evenings are for relaxing. Because Wednesday comes and oh shit Jesus, it's halfway through the week. You've only got a few more days left before you can relax proper styly on the weekend for a whole two days. Two days of a weekend. I, I don't think two days is enough for a weekend. What do you guys think? Do you reckon the working week should be like three days? Because I think that's a fair split, don't you? Four days off, three days on. You can do it in, in groups if you want. So two days, then a few days in work, then two days off. So you get like double weekends, you know what I mean? But we couldn't call them weekends if they're not at the end. So maybe they could be, call them like week breads or something. Because it's like a sandwich, you know? you got off time, in time, off time, in time. I'd like that. Uh, anyway, I'm waffling shite again. Look at that. We've only just started two and a half minutes in. I'm already waffling shite. Another reason you folks are lucky I'm even, even doing a podcast this week is because the Final Fantasy VIII remaster has been launched. It's been released and I got it on the Switch. So hopefully this will be the time I will finally finish my favorite game because I've never actually managed to finish it. It's very hard and the copy that I had was glitchy as shit. It kept crashing, kept breaking. Not good. Not good at all. Um, what was good this week, though, was the burger of the week. Oh, Jesus. Oh, Lord Jesus, it's a burger. Um, as you folks know, every single week, I go to... <coughs> Excuse me. Very dry throat. Every single week, I go to cafe at the end of the universe, and I get myself the burger of the week. Remember, guys, not sponsored. Wouldn't mind it, but I'm not sponsored. <laughs> this week's burger of the week was the tantalizingly titled Smokey and the Brisket. And it was good. It was jolly, jolly good. If you like meat, you, I was about to say, if you like meat in your mouth, you'll love this. Hmm. Let me rephrase. If you like meat and enjoy flavors, this is the burger for you. It was so good. It had on it. Let's read. I'll read out to you what it had on it because I'm a nice guy, you see. I don't mind looking at the words and reading them on your behalf because you can't see the words. So it would be difficult for you to do. Now, they had beef patty. Smoked brisket, beef brisket, oh, it was oh, so good. Uh, sriracha mayo, pulled pork, which, by the way, I had gone off pulled pork about two years ago. I stopped eating it because I had some funky one at Subway and it put me off. But this has got me oh, right back on board. On to the pulled pork choo-choo. Ho, oh, oh, ho, that's me. Uh, it had deep fried pickle, which I like. Uh, barbecue sauce, slaw, and it had on top a beer cheese croquette. Oh, Om nom 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 nom. You guys definitely need to try that out if you haven't yet. It's in Warrington. Uh, and then, as usual, we then had a dessert from Dark Side of the Spoon. This week's dessert was actually made by the gentleman who makes the burgers as well. So it was a full-on Andy week. And it was key lime pie. Because I cannot see key lime pie on a menu and not buy it. Key lime pie is my favourite dessert, I think. I don't know why. It's so simple, but it's so freaking delicious. So I had a good old time on Saturday. That's what I did. I did them two things and it was fucking amazing. Um, now, yeah, it's just, it's been, it's been good. You know, it's been a good little week. Uh, I'm going to get 
back to doing my personal artwork soon, hopefully. I've not had a chance really yet. I've been procrastinating and whatnot, but I'll get back to it. And I'm trying to get into my Japanese again. It's really hard work, but I'm doing it slowly, slowly, but surely. I'm getting back onto that Nihongo horse. Uh, I know the word for horse. What's the word for horse? Uma. Nihongo no Uma. Japanese horse. That's what I'll be getting back onto. Uh, it's not called Uma because of Uma Thurman, by the way. The Japanese don't have just this hidden hatred towards Uma Thurman. It's just called Uma because that's the word. I don't know why. I didn't make the bastard. That's just what the word is. Um, now, I saw before online, one of my friends who I used to work with has got a very strange injury. And it got me wondering, I wonder if any of you guys have had a similar thing. Now, she had an injury on her elbow when I think she said when she was 13 or 13 years ago. I don't know which one it was, but either way, that's not that far apart. Um, apparently she had an injury on her elbow and every now and again, her elbow just locks, but it goes okay after a little bit and she thinks nothing of it. Maybe it's like, you know, a muscle injury or whatever. Well, apparently yesterday or the day before, it locked while she was in the gym and just wouldn't unlock at all. So she had to go to the emergency room off to the hospital, go get checked out. And they checked it out, they give her x-rays and whatnot. And they said, huh, have you ever hurt your elbow? She's like, yeah, when I was a kid. Well, apparently you've chipped a bit off and it's just jammed in between the joints. And that's why it's locked. Isn't that a weird injury to have? Just a bit of bone, just, just chilling, just chilling in between some other bits of bone. Now, I feel like there's a chance I've got that in my jaw because <laughs> every now and again, I remember I got clocked in the jaw when I was younger. There was a lad in a park. I was about, I don't know, eight, nine, probably a little bit older. I honestly can't remember. But there was a lad in the park who was older. He would have been like 12 or 13. And he was being a big old prick. Uh, and he was bullying people and whatnot. And, you know, whatever. We were just trying to leave the park. Because I thought, I don't like this. I, I don't like conflict. So I just walk away. And as I was walking away, he blocked the gate. And he's like, where do you think you're going? And I didn't say a word. I kept completely silent. And he just punched me. Full on boof. Left or right hook. I forget which one. Right into the side of my fizzog. My fat face. My childish fat face. Took a full on teenage punch. And I was quite proud of myself. I just stood there and I went. That wasn't very nice. And then walked off. And whilst walking away. That's when I started to just bawl crying. Like owie owie cries. You know. You know like when you've got an uncontrollable flood of emotion because you're in so much pain <laughs> so that's what happened um and i feel like ever since then i've had a fucked up jaw um because it that's it clicking right there i don't know if you can even hear that uh but that was it clicking and every now and again i'll i'll wake up and it'll be completely locked and i can't do anything about it it'll go away after a few minutes sometimes sometimes it doesn't go away properly for ages sometimes it just cracks really loudly so it's not good it's not beneficial but it might be you know a similar kind of injury i'm not sure but i didn't know this kind of injury existed you see so now i'm thinking huh that sounds quite similar to the old face issue that i've got and i don't just mean the appearance folks i mean the jaw you mad bastards you're very evil um now let's see what was i going to chat about today i had a couple of things lined up to chat about Oh yeah, I apparently I learned today that I must enjoy witnessing physical pain in other people. And I don't mean this in a sadistic way. I mean this in like a, uh, how do you say torturous without sounding like a torturer? Mild, mildly. I enjoy it in a mildly torturous manner. And by that I mean I was in the kitchen at work earlier. And one of the guys was just cutting up some chicken on a plate. Uh, you know, cutting it up as you do. But as he was cutting the chicken, every now and again it would scrape. And you know that sound of, of a fork or a knife scraping on a plate? I'm completely fine with it, but some people it goes straight through. And one of my other friends that I work with, he was he came into the kitchen whilst the scraping was happening. And because he didn't like the scraping, he was obviously, you know, wincing from it. And the guy who was doing the cutting saw this and then obviously just did nothing but scrape on the plate for a few seconds. And it made me so happy because it was so funny to watch my other friend just start sort of it was almost like a dance. It was kind of magical in some kind of weird way. He just did not like it whatsoever. So he was there wincing and dancing and covering his ears and going, ah, eh, eh, it's horrible, eh. <laughs> I was just, I was just stood there laughing, putting water in my noodles. Uh, I was eating noodles. I don't mean I wasn't, you know, bathing the, uh, the alfella. Uh, yeah. So I, th I, apparently in that moment, I learned that I enjoy seeing people in, Maybe not pain. Pain probably isn't the right word. Maybe mild distress 
is mild distress. Does that sound better than pain? I'm not really sure, actually. If you put the word distress in something, it sounds kind of worse to me. What about, um, let's see, let's see, tantalizingly tingly sound sensations. That's not even, a, that doesn't even make sense. What am I talking about? So that, anyway, hey, have you guys got a different thing that I can call it? I don't know what it is. It's not pain. It's not physical. Although, I don't know, Do you, if you hear a sound, right, that's your body reacting inside your head to the sound that you can hear. So is that, does that make it a physical thing? Because I know, for example, if I was to just throw a ball at your face, then yeah, that's a physical assault <laughs> because you've received something physically into your face. But if I was to just scream down your ear, um, is that is that a physical attack? I don't think it is. You have a physiological response, but I don't think that makes it a physical attack. What do you guys think? Let me know. Get in touch. I'm curious what you guys think. I always am. So if you ever have stuff to say to me, say it to me on social media or in an email. Um, oh God, I've like, <laughs> I have something to tell you folks that was quite uh, fascinating. Some would say almost assault worthy. I, I wouldn't go that far actually. It was just a fascinating situation. Uh, now, th th we going to get a little bit personal in this bitch, okay? So folks, ladies and gentlemen, I, Chris Hunter of Chris Hunter Comedy Podcast fame, don't use urinals. There you go. Now you know. I don't use them. I don't like to use them. I'm not shy or anything, but I have like a shy bladder, I think. Just basically, if I'm at a urinal, performance isn't really the highest priority on my list. The highest priority is get out of there. So I'm a cubicle user, as as they are called in my neck of the woods, where I call them a cubicle. So recently, ever since we went to Japan, I've realized I need to start getting used to using a urinal like a big boy, because in Japan... It's very much a case of if the stalls are free, that's for pooping. If the urinals are free, that's for peeping. So you pick one, you queue wherever you need to queue and you do your business where you need to do it. So I thought I need to try and get used to that mentality. I need to get over whatever's going on to try and get used to using urinals. And slowly but surely, I've been training myself. I've been doing the right thing. I've been going two urinals where possible. I've been trying to wait till I'm a bit desperate because then I kind of haven't got a choice, you know what I mean? And then I'm there... And I'm like, okay, someone's coming, just don't look, it'll be fine. Let's just get this over with, and then it'll go. I'm like, ah, oh, awesome, okay. So I've been trying to gradually do that. But the problem is, obviously, it's an embarrassing thing. And I know I'm telling you folks, but you folks are like family, you know what I mean? Some of you are family. So, you know, take that as you will. Um, so yeah, I've been trying to use more urinals, but in places where I don't know people. So, you know, maybe like uh, when we're out shopping or something, you know, I don't know anybody in my area, so that's fine. Um can't do it at work, obviously, I know everybody there. Can't do it in other places I hang out, I know people there. So I tried, I, I drive past the service station on the way home. So I thought, you know what, I'll try and go in there. There's, they've got hundreds of toilets, it'll be fine. I'll be one in a crowd of loads that nobody will see or, you know, be able to distract me because it's, it's, it's just background noise, you know. At a certain point, uh, you just become a statistic, you know. Two people in the room is awkward. 25 people in the room, it's fine. It's just a statistic at that point. So that's what I thought. Service station, that's a good idea. So I went there anyway, and they've redone all the toilets. So it's not like these have a massive big row of just a shit ton of urinals and a shit ton, pardon the pun, of uh, cubicles. And obviously normally you go in a cubicle, whatever, leave. But I thought this time I'm going to try and be brave. I'll go to a urinal. So I go there and I'm confused because there's only like six urinals there now i don't know where the other half of the whole room has gone they must have closed it off and built a wall and then you know used it for storage on the other side or something i do not know so i'm stood there confused i'm alone luckily i'm stood there confused and looking around like where the fuck is all the stuff gone um and then anyway i'm there it's, it's been about 20 seconds i'm really struggling with this one and i'm like oh for god's sake come on come on just focus get stuff out your mind because i think in my head i know that the main like, the, the central corridor to get in and stuff, there's no doors, you know, it's just corridors that bend so people can't see in. But I know it's outside, so I know any minute now, somebody could turn up. So my brain's like, come on, let's get this over with. And my buddy's saying, dude, don't rush me. So I'm there, trying to do my stuff, and then somebody arrives a couple of urinals away. I'm like, okay, right, someone's there, just let's try and, let's just power through this, just try and block them out. And so I'm stood there, I'm trying to do my thing, I'm looking at the wall straight ahead, and then I notice in my periphery, because you know peripheral vision's pretty good, especially when somebody stood like two people away from you. And I can see this guy, <clears throat> let's just say he's not there to urinate. This guy's there, and there's a lot of hand movement. Let's just say that. There's a lot of hand movement going on. 
couple of stalls away, a couple of, you know, urinals away. And I'm stood there like, he's not. Is he? Is he really? And so I think, oh, fucking, I feel like he's staring at me. Like, so I turn to look him in the face. And he ain't looking at my face. He's looking right at old, you know, old cheeky flangledang. He's just staring at it and going ham on his own. I'm like, excuse me. So I did, being the polite individual I am, rather than freaking out or shouting at him or whatever, I just looked at him. And when he looked up, I did the sort of, the gentleman like, you know, yeah, all right. you know, kind of a, what what the fuck are you doing kind of, you're right. You know, like the passive aggressive, the kind of you're right that means, listen, you can stop doing what you're doing or I can just deck you right now. Which one are we going to do? And when I said you're right to him, he smiled and got kind of giddy and then left. I was like, that was, all right, that was fucking weird. That was really fucking weird. So I'm trying to, I'm still trying to wait at this point, by the way. Obviously, I've not managed to yet. Oh, God, I'm reliving it now. It's traumatising, folks. It's bloody traumatising. So, yeah. And then, t- what, what happened next? I was turning around. I turned around. I thought, I'm, I'm giving up. I'm getting out of here. This has freaked me out. Whatever urine I had to get rid of has now just shot right back up into my body. I'm just fucking out of here. So I turned around to go. Obviously, everything's away and whatnot. And the guy's there, like, stood next to the sinks. And he's, like, thumb pointing to the cubicles behind him with his head being like, come on. You know, let's go. He didn't say any actual words, but that's what he's doing with his face and his head. This is a podcast, so it's not a visual medium, but you get the idea. Imagine you're beckoning somebody, using your head and thumb and pointing towards a cubicle. That's what he was doing. I was just like, what the fuck is going on here? So I just left. I just left. I didn't say a word to him. I was like, what the fuck is going on? And yes, I've now learned that apparently I need to find somewhere between somewhere I'm known very well, like work, and somewhere I'm known, not at all, like a service station. Because apparently, if you go all the way to the service station end of the scale, you you cross the territory the territory of simple strangers, and you cross over into the territory of pervets and cottages. So I don't want to get any involvement in that situation. <laughs> so I shan't be trying that again anytime soon. Um, so yeah, I thought you folks would like to hear that little tale of woe. Um, so obviously I got home and did a wee once I was home. But yeah, that's, oh God, it's, it sounds so stupid that you have to train yourself to use your urinal as an adult, <laughs> but it's just, stu- it's, it's something I've just always had that issue. I've never used them and I'm trying, I'm trying my best to slowly teach myself to think it's okay. It's fine. Cause ironically, I have no shame. So I don't care if people see stuff or whatever, but you can't really just overwrite that like mental block. You know what I mean? Like, like if somebody's staring at you, you get that, f- oh, well, they're not staring at you, but if somebody's in the same room as you, you get that kind of feeling, you know, like in the back of your neck that, um, it's just like, oh, there's someone else here. I sense a presence. And when I, when I have that feeling, I just can't go the loo, you know? So that's why I'm trying to get over that. Anyway, that's probably a little bit too detailed, but I hope you like the tale of the gentleman, uh, <laughs> in the services who I shan't be visiting anytime soon. Uh, yeah, that was awkward. Plus, I mean, in one way, I guess it was not, not flattering is the wrong word. But in one way, I guess it's nice to have some kind of interest. <laughs> but in the other way, it wasn't even like it was, you know, it was just some middle-aged bloke in a builder's uniform, like a builder's outfit with a high-vis jacket on. And I thought, surely a high-vis jacket is not the outfit you'd wear when you're trying to elicit sexual acts from strangers. You know what I mean? Like, it's not like you can say to the police, oh, it was the guy in, you know, I don't know, the, the blue t-shirt. Like, oh, well, there's a few people in blue t-shirts. You're like, no, it was the guy who's glowing in the cubicle over there on his knees. You know what I mean? That's It's a stupid idea. Uh, anywho, speaking of clothes, speaking of clothing, I went to town the other day. I was trying to get some new clothing. We were actually looking for a bag for the lovely Charlie to take with her on holiday um, and some Disney badges. So we went to Primark where they have both of those things. And when I went upstairs, I saw that they have, they've got just a shit ton of socks now. Like, there's, they've got lots of stuff that I like at Primark now. They never used to. But now they've got stuff like PlayStation branded things, Rick and Morty branding, Deadpool branding. I mean, that is brilliant because you guys probably know... Oh, sorry, I've got hiccups again. You guys probably know by now. I've mentioned it enough times. But I've been a Deadpool fan since like 2001. So it's, what, 18 years? 
Bloody long time, and for the longest time, obviously before the film, no fucker knew who Deadpool was. So I couldn't get merch, I couldn't get any fancy stuff, and now Deadpool has been hugely successful, which means he's got merchandise everywhere. And that means that even Primark have got it, so I can get Deadpool socks and, you know, pyjamas, t-shirts, whatever I want, they've got it. And it always baffles me that, like, they've got so many different, um, like, licensed products. Like, if you want Family Guy socks or, you know, Ricky and Morty uh, Game of Thrones, Assassin's Creed, all sorts of stuffs there. And it just, it baffles me of the sheer selection of men's socks that are available. Back in the day, they'd be like, you can't buy that. You're a man. You'll wear normal white socks with a sporty stripe on the top and you'll like it. Whereas these days, it's like, which colour do you want? I want this one. It's purple. Which are the ones I've currently got on? The Rick and Morty purple ones. I've recently got into the trend. I'm trying to get really loud socks going on. I've got this set. Right? They're like Munster socks. They're striped with bright colours and they've got faces on them. And I love them. <laughs> it looks goofy. I don't give a shit. I love them. So, yes. If you don't like bright socks, get the fuck out of my house. I like bright socks in this house. Um, now, you folks know I've been trying to eat a little bit better. And I wanted to bring something to your knowledge. Some, what is that the word? I wanted to bring some knowledge to your attention. I don't know if you know about this stuff. There's a type of ice cream, which is kind of expensive, but it's called Halo Top Ice Cream. It's got the gold rim around the top of it. And it's basically, it's ice cream, but somehow it's low calorie. I don't understand how they do it. It tastes bloody delicious. And I don't get it. But you guys should definitely try it. It's got some cool flavors like cinnamon, cinnamon roll and uh, coffee, blah, blah, and cookie dough i don't remember exactly okay but it's nice give it a go but i only ever tend to get it when it's on sale because it's expensive as shit it's like five pound a tub but when it's on sale it's like 250 which is a bit better you know it's not great but it's not awful you know uh but there's another company uh frayers frayers i can't remember the name of the other company but at the moment they're in heron for like one pound fifty so the other day i got a tub of that and i basically demolished half of it in about six seconds not healthy um and you know what? For the first time in a long time, I felt sick because I think I'd just eaten too much or too quickly, sorry. I think I just ate it too quickly. It didn't leave me feeling great, even though calorifically it wasn't horrific. The act of eating like an animal was horrific to me. And I think my body was like, dude, we're getting rid. So luckily I was okay. I, um, yeah, I, I got rid of it in other means, shall we say. Uh, I don't know why I'm being so sherry today. I've, it's nice to share with you folks. You know, you listen and I like to speak. So that's what happens. Um, oh, by the way, I watched... Um, I'm going to go watch Bill Burr's special in a bit. But I watched... Yesterday, I watched Whitney Cummings' new special on Netflix. It was called... I think it's called Can I Touch It? Or something like that. And in the, in this special, she has, for some reason, built herself a sex robot that is built in her likeness. Now, it's not the ultimate ego trip. She bought it for her fiancé, thought it'd be funny. Apparently, he hates it. But it was so weird to see this fully functioning robot with her face. And they literally moulded her face. They they got everything. They poured mould down it. Uh, they, not mould. They poured, like, that latex mouldy stuff down her ear canal to get the right shapes and filled her mouth. So, you know, reasons. And it's just... It was insane. And I didn't realise you can get, like, robots that look like people. But it got me thinking, like, if, if she built a sex robot that looks like her. Like, if you folks could build anything that looked like you, what would it be? Like, what would you build in your likeness? You know, like, I was thinking about this, and I thought I'd like to be one of those cookie jars that, you know, has, like, a voice box in it, so when you open it, it says something. Because, I'm, you know, I'm trying to eat healthier, so I'd want something to at least attempt to deter me from eating myself to death. Uh, so if I thought if I was a cookie jar, and you open it, and I think... It'd be quite charming, you see. It'd be like a little ceramic jar with, if you imagine me, but tubbier. And maybe in like lederhosen or something. Like a, a little a little bit, you know, chubby and campy. And then when you open it, it says, hey, those are my biscuits. You know, so that way you don't take them. You can't feel fully guilt-free because you're f stealing this poor little gay chubby German chap's biscuits. And it's not very nice. It's not very nice indeed. So, yeah, if you folks, let me know. If you could be any object, if it could have your face on it, what would you be and why? You can get in touch on social media and stuff. You know the drill by now. I'll tell you all the stuff in a minute. But for now, that would be a cool thing for you to tell me. Uh, now, on to the new sections. Uh, you folks seem to like it last week, so I'm going to do it again this week until people complain enough for me to 
do it twice as often just to annoy you. So I'm going to do this day's trivia stuff again. This time we've got three three things that I found particularly interesting about September the 10th. Uh, now, September the 10th, 1980, apparently marijuana was legalised in the US for use for medical purposes such as nausea and vomiting in chemotherapy patients. Um, so I thought that was really nice, wasn't it? But who knew it was, what, th- that long ago? 38 years ago, is it? Yeah, somewhere around there. A while ago. 31 years ago. Forget, no, 40, fuck it. 39 years ago, there we go. Uh, a long time ago. It was a long time ago. Uh, so I was surprising. I, I was surprised to find that out because people are always talking about legalizing marijuana now. And obviously California and a few other states have started to do that. But apparently, for certain people, in certain situations, it's been legal for a very long time, which I'm glad about because it's meant to really help people. Uh, it's like CBD oil and all that stuff. Apparently, that's meant to be fantastic for people who've got like anxiety or sleep disorders or all sorts of stuff. Uh, now, this is another funny one. Well, the last one wasn't funny, but it was interesting. This one's a bit funnier. September the 10th, 1897. September 10th, 1897 was the first drunk driving offence. That is a long ass time ago to have the first drunk driver. 25 year old London taxi driver George Smith, of course it was George, fucking George. He's always about fucking landing in his fucking taxi, getting fucking pissed. George Smith is arrested and convicted the same day. He'd driven his electric cab into a building after having a few beers. <laughs> He pleaded guilty and was fined 25 shillings. Oh, Georgie boy. That George. That bloody George. He's always fatty and drinking, isn't he? A silly, silly George. How much is 25 shillings? Let's find out, folks. Let's find out whether 25 shillings, how much today? Let's find out. I never know how much shillings are meant to be. Come on, come on. Show me. Show me. Uh, Come on. Fuck's sake. Oh, sod it. This is it. Wait. Okay. We're almost there. Let me. It's asking for a year. 1897. 1897. 1890s. Okay, 25 shillings. 25 shillings. Come on, you bastard. Uh, it only goes to 19. All right, screw that noise. If any of you guys know how much 25 shillings was, 1897 money, let me know. Uh, all right, and then... Oh, this is another one. This one really interested me, and I feel bad for the person, but it is kind of funny in a little way. Um, September the 10th. 1972, the world's first meteorite victim died. Yep, I didn't say that wrong. Meteorite victim. This poor sod in America, uh, what's her name? Anne Elizabeth Fowler Hodges. What a name. Uh, She was the only known person to have been injured by a meteorite. The poor sod, probably just walking along, minding her own business, be like, oh, look at that, it's a firefly. Wait a minute, that firefly is growing like a mug. And then it hits her right wherever it hits her and kills her. That is damn unfortunate. Damn unfortunate. Uh, I used to, I remember watching a TV show back in the day called uh, Dead Like Me. That was a good show. It was about Grim Reapers uh, living amongst us. And the girl who becomes like the new Grim Reaper, she got killed by a toilet seat that fell from space because it was a... I think there'd been like an, an accident on the space station and the toilet broke <laughs> and the seat plummeted to earth and killed her. And it reminded me of that. So I thought that was kind of funny. Right. On to this week's thumbs up and thumbs down. Thumbs up, Netflix. At the moment, they are fucking killing it. There's some cracking stand-up comedy going on, some great TV shows, some other good bits and bobs. If you've not got a Netflix account, I highly recommend getting one. Not sponsored at all. I just like the content they're putting out. And like I said many times before, tonight, Bill Bear's new special, Paper Tiger, is out on Netflix, and I'm so excited. Now, my thumbs down for this week is fucking smokers. And let me finish. Let me finish. I'm not saying all smokers. I'm saying the smokers who smoke so much that they fucking reek of smoke. I don't mean like the, oh, you know, you. Be, I don't mean like, oh, you've been for a smoke recently. I mean the ones who you cannot breathe walking past. There's a couple of people who I have worked with in the past who are like this, where you can't stand within a two meter radius of them without choking up because they are just filling your lungs, not with candy, but with smoke. And it is not a delicious scent. And I had this issue in, in, again, in the toilets recently. What is this? The fucking toilet episode. Um, I did this, I had this recently in the toilets where I was in a cubicle and somebody was drying their hands on the old, you know, the old hand dryer, the, one of them things. I know you know what a hand dryer is. I didn't need to do an impression, but I felt sometimes you need the, you need the medium, you know? This isn't visual. You need the audio to drive the situation. Anyway, he stood at the old, and 
the wind is blowing underneath the cubicle. And oh my god, the smell of the smoke from him was wafting with it. And it was so goddamn strong. Like, you, you, they must smoke so much that they have no idea that they fucking reek. But it is painful to breathe near them. It's that strong. So folks, if you do smoke, do me a favour. Ask somebody, ask one of your friends who doesn't smoke. Listen, tell me honestly. Do I reek right now? Do you want to dig out your tongue just so that you've got something to block your you know, your throat with so that you haven't got to smell this shit? Yes, I know you don't smell with your throat. I just, you know, sometimes you talk and you realise it's nonsense. Anyway, um, yeah, so that's my thumbs down for this week of smokers. Now, folks, that is me for the week. If you want to ask me any questions, hurl any abuse at me, leave a review or whatever, that's fine. You can do. I'm on social media. Uh, I'm at Chris Hunter Comedy on, uh, let's see, Facebook, Instagram, YouTube. Uh, I'm on Twitter at Chris Hunter Com, which is short for comedy. You can even email me if you want. It's Chris, uh, what is it now? What's my email address? Uh, I think it's Chris at Chris Hunter Comedy. No, it's Chris Hunter Comedy at gmail.com. That's the one. If you want to email me with some longer questions or any suggestions or just, you know, random creepy stories, feel free to. I might even read them out on the air. How's that sound? Uh, so yeah, thanks a lot for listening, folks. If you like what you've heard, please, 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 for the love of God, share it with your friends. Let them know that this exists. I need people to listen so I can feel good about myself. Uh, drop a review on iTunes or Spotify, wherever you listen to it. Uh, and thanks a lot for listening, folks. I love you all. Have a beautiful week. See you all next week. Bye-bye now.